with Garan Vincent. Good afternoon. Nigel Farage set out today what he described as the Reform Party's contract with voters. It makes bold promises on immigration, healthcare, the environment and the economy, but rivals say they don't add up. And while Mr Farage admitted reform won't win this election, he revealed that they are already planning for the next one. Here's our political correspondent, Harry Horton. His aim has been to disrupt this election and to become the opposition. But at this slightly shabby sports club in South Wales today, Nigel Farage set out his Reform Party's policies. No surprises about his top issue. How can you discuss NHS waiting lists without discussing the fact that the population has risen by 6 million people since David Cameron came to power back in 2010? How can you talk about a shortage of housing when we need to build one new dwelling every two minutes just to cope with current levels of net migration? What Reform call their contract contains a huge £150 billion worth of spending cuts and £140 billion of extra costs. Reforms say the threshold at which people start paying income tax should increase to £20,000. It wants corporation tax cut from 25 to 20%, and after three years to 15%. Reform says it would cut NHS waiting lists to zero in two years by encouraging more people to use the private sector. To pay for some tax cuts, government budgets would be cut by 5%. Some people will lose their jobs, of course. How many? Well, you know, five, basically, the bosses will be told, look, we're not going to be in government. This is what we're going to urge the Labour government to do. Have you ever worked in... I've worked in the private sector, right, where the boss says, the figures are bad, you've got to cut overheads by 10%. Do you know what you do? You cut overheads by 10%. It's either going to be a Labour government or a Tory government, and that is the choice. There's only two candidates to be Prime Minister. One of them is Rishi Sunak. Um, and one of them is myself. And there's a very clear choice at this election. It's having your taxes cut by the Conservatives or facing significant tax rises with the Labour Party. Now, we, we know now the manifestos are all out. Everyone's cards are on the table. Yeah, Nigel Farage admits his party won't be in government, but hopes his policies might yet shape whoever is in power. Harry Hilton, ITV News, Merthyr Tidford. Elsewhere today, the Shadow Chancellor said Labour would try to secure closer ties with the European Union if elected. Brexit has barely featured on the campaign trail so far, but today Rachel Reeves said she'd look to improve the UK's trading relationship with Europe, and she insisted her party would prove it is pro-business. And uh, no hard hats were required during a visit to Devon for the Liberal Democrat leader saying Davy. He was building sandcastles on the beach while unveiling plans to support rural communities. The Lib Dems want to expand fuel duty relief to bring down petrol prices in more remote areas. To Israel now, where the Prime Minister has dissolved the war cabinet, which was put together to direct the operation in Gaza. A key member of the government, Benny Gantz, resigned eight days ago over Benjamin Netanyahu's leadership. Decisions will now be taken by a smaller group. Here, new data has revealed the soaring number of pubs which are calling last orders for the last time. Around 80 pubs shut each month during the first quarter of this year. That's up more than 50% on the same period in 2023. Industry experts blame the high cost of energy and food, plus customers increasingly squeezed spending capacity. And finally, the composer, Lord Andrew Lloyd Webber, has this afternoon been made a night companion at Windsor Castle. Princess Anne, Prince Edward and Prince William were among the royals processing down to St George's Chapel. A short time ago, they were followed by the King and Queen Camilla for the annual Garter Day service. And that's all we have time for. The weather's next, and Tom will be here with a full-length news at 10. That's at half-past 10 tonight. Now, enjoy the football. Bye-bye.